So start by having your two clips ready and then pre-compose them together. If you want the add-on of like a little pop-up person, then add the picture that you want to use for that as well. Pre-compose that picture and then create a mask around your person. Then create a solid layer and add element to it. Open up the custom layers, custom texture maps, and add your pre-composition with the two clips for layer 1. If you want to add a little pop-up person, then also add that picture for layer 2. And again, if you're adding a pop-up person, then also open up the custom text and mask and add the mask for layer 1. Now open up the scene setup. If you're having issues with elements where nothing pops up for you or it's just a red or black screen, your computer might not be able to handle elements. Other people have issues with their picture not showing up later, so here's a list of solutions for that. I'll also link this community post in the description in case anyone wants to add on more solutions. But anyways, create a cube, then go down to the size XYZ and change the middle value to 0 0.5. Turn down the chamfer to 0 and the chamfer segments to 1. Then click the little icon with the arrows and change the middle position value to 0 0.25. To add your picture, extend the cube so that you see the material which is the little sphere thing that says default. Click it, then click on diffuse, then click the arrow and select your picture. Now select the cube again and click on the little checkerboard icon to change the texture mapping to box preserve aspect. Now make another cube and turn down the chamfers like we did earlier and make the middle size value 0.5 as well. This time you want to change the position to negative 0.25 and just add your picture the same way that we did for the first one. This time, when you change the texture mapping to the box preserve aspect, you want to also change the second UV offset value to negative 0.5. It helps a lot to label all of the objects, so right click the cubes to rename them. This next step is only if you want to add the pop-up person, so click on extrude and now your mask should pop up. And again, if you're having issues with elements, it might not be there and unfortunately I haven't found a solution for this specific problem, so really sorry about that. But if it works out for you, just extend the extrusion. If you want, you can change up the bevel for your little person. If you don't know how to do that or what these settings mean, I have a video that I'll link in the description for you to watch. To add your picture, click on the little picture icon and then from there it's the same process as earlier. This time though, you want to change the texture mapping to UV. Then you want to click on the arrows and reduce the scale so it's as small as the cube. Then click the blue square next to your top cube so that you can place the person on the bottom cube if that makes sense. Just keep adjusting it until you have it placed the same way I do and also that the head doesn't pop out from the top of the cube. Once you're done positioning everything, click the folder on the bottom left and drag the top part of your cube into that folder. Then drag that group folder so it's at the very top of the panel. You want to drag it up until there's a line above the first group folder. You don't want an outline around the group folder, you want a line above it. Then just change the group number to 2. Now you should have the bottom part in group 1 and the top part in group 2. If you're adding a little person and you have that extrusion model, make another folder and drag the extrusion model there. Then do the same thing where you drag the group folder at the very top of the panel and change the group number to 3. Now we're done setting everything up for now, so click OK to close element. I'm just going to hide my other layers. If your cube is too small, just increase the scale of the element layer. Now you want to open the group 1 panel and create a group null. On the group null, keyframe the Y rotation at the very beginning of your clip. 
Then go to the middle of your clip and rotate it to 90. Then at the end of your clip, rotate it to 180. Now highlight all of your keyframes and easy ease them. And just copy my graph. You can just make the graph sharper or softer depending on your edit. And also don't forget to add motion blur on your element layer. Now go back to your element layer and create a group null for group 2. Then just copy your keyframes from group 1 onto your group 2 null. However, you want to change the middle value to negative 90 and the end value to negative 180. Then just fix up your graph like this. So that's actually all that you have to do for the cube split. I'll be talking about the add-ons now, but you can stop here. But again, I highly recommend watching the lighting part because it'll look a lot better. If you're adding the little person pop-up, start by separating the position dimensions of the group 1 null and keyframe the Y position at the beginning. Then at the end, just move your cube down. Add a keyframe in the middle of your clip. Then easy ease your keyframes and copy my graph. Then you want to do the same thing for your group 2 null, except this time you want to push it up at the end. Then just easy ease, same graph. Now go back to your element layer and add a group 3 null. You want to copy all of your keyframes from the group 1 null onto the group 3 null. At the beginning, keyframe the scale and make it 0. At the end, just increase the scale to your liking. You also want to add a keyframe in the middle, easy ease them, and copy my graph. that's all for this add-on. Again, you can stop here or keep watching for the last add-on. For this last part, go back to your element scene setup. On the right, you should have a folder with models that come with elements. If you don't have it, unfortunately, I couldn't really find a video on how to download them, but it should have already been there from element. So just click on the starter pack folder and scroll down until you see ball fracture. Double click it and increase the scale to about 300 to 500. Then just change the color to whatever you want or use one of the presets. If you don't have these presets, there is a link in the description to download them. Now create a folder and drag the ball fracture into that folder. And again, drag the folder at the very top of the panel and change the group number to 4. Then just click OK to exit element, then open up the group 4 panel, then particle look, then multi-object and enable the multi-object. Then just decrease the size and it should start breaking apart. I usually do size 0.20 to 0.30. To spread the rocks out some more, increase the displacement. And if you want to add a glow, open the render settings, then the glow, enable the glow, and change the illumination to luminance. Then check off the background glow. Then increase the radius between 5 and 10 and increase the glow intensity between 5 and 15. If you want, you can change the glow tint so that the glow has a different color from the particles. Now, just open up the world transform and extend the world rotation. At the beginning, keyframe the Z rotation, and at the end, change the Z rotation to a low number somewhere around positive 10 to 30 or negative 10 to 30. You don't have to easy ease these keyframes. I'm also keyframing the scale of the elements layer so that it's smaller in the beginning and bigger in the end. And I'm not going to easy ease these keyframes either. Then create a group for null and keyframe the Y rotation in the beginning and at the end change it to a number around 180. Lastly, to add a light, just add a light layer and make it a spotlight. I like making the intensity 150, but of course you can change this. You can decrease the cone angle to make the light radius smaller. I like doing 50 to 90. Then just move your cursor around where the arrows are until it says Z and drag it away from the cube. And just add a background that matches your edit and you're done.